Math. Fucking sucks. But it wasn't always like this. It honestly used to be pretty fun. Those multiplication sheets were awesome and shapes were super cool to draw until we had to like prove them? What do you mean prove that it's a triangle? Look at it! It has triangles, dipshit! Then we introduced the eggs and started drawing lines and giving them characteristics. It all went downhill, dude. Who even uses sine, cosine, and tangent in real life? Numbers were not supposed to be given names! Mathematicians demand that we learn their bullshit mathematics and respect them simultaneously! We are stuck in the matrix! These concepts aren't real! Hello merchant, I would like integral from 0 to approximately 2.16 of 2 times of sine x plus 3 times of cosine x with respect to x of apples, please. See what I'm trying to say? God did not intend us to count past the number of 10! But, because the school system demands that we learn mathematics, even though the concepts past algebra are absolutely ridiculous, at least let's make the learning process fun. How do we make learning maths fun? The way we make anything fun. WITH ANIME GIRLS! Rawr! Arithmetic is the first and my favorite branch of mathematics since it's the only fun I remember having with maths. It deals with the four basic operators, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Addition is an operator that combines numbers to get a total sum. His main op, subtraction, does the opposite and takes numbers away from one another. Then multiplication, which is just addition on steroids, involves adding a number to itself a certain number of times. For example, instead of saying 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 12, you can just say 4 times 3 equals 12, the 3 implying the number of times a number is added. And then division, which is multiplication's main op and also the most glazed on operator, is basically subtraction on steroids. As I said, this is the most glazed on operator. That's why mathematicians gave it a second way to be written. Fractions. Fractions are unfinished divisions representing parts of a whole. The top number, numerator, indicates how many parts we have while the bottom number, denominator, shows how many of those parts make up a whole. For easier visualization, imagine Makima is on top and I am on the bottom. This is canon to real life, by the way. For example, 4 over 2 represents that we have 4 halves, which essentially just means you got 2 holes. Because if you divide 4 by 2, you get 2. But we can go even deeper. What would happen with a fraction of 1 over 2? Well, fractions like that can stand on their own, but let's say we want to solve it. Well, we can divide 1 by 2, so what do we do now? Well, we can transform our numbers from whole to rational numbers by adding a decimal point and creating 1.0 divided by 2.0. Move the dot from the dividend by one number to the right, then we got 10 divided by 2. Which is easy, that's just 5. But because we moved the decimal point to the right at the start of the equation, we need to reverse that and do it again by moving it back to the left, giving us 0.5, the result of the equation. But sometimes decimals repeat to infinity. For example, if you divide 1 by 3, with the same process we did before, 3 goes into 10 3 times, since 3 times 3 equals 9. Subtract, subtract 9 from 10, 1 remains, bring it down, add another 0, and repeat. You'll soon realize that this equation repeats indefinitely, and mathematicians knew calculating this shit was pretty dumb. Therefore, they wrote it like this. Now that you understand that, there are just a couple more concepts and rules I've got to explain. First is the order of operators. Operations are done from left to right, just like reading. And multiplication and division are the sigma alpha males, and they will always have priority over the beta subtraction and addition. For example, in the equation 3 times 5 plus 3, it equals to 18, because we first multiply 3 and 5, and then add 3, because multiplication has priority. The only way to prioritize subtraction and addition is by putting them in brackets like this. Now you first solve the bracket, which is 8, and then multiply it, giving us a total of 24. Negative numbers also exist, they are just numbers below 0. One thing to note is that when you subtract with negatives, for example, if we subtract 5 from minus 8, as in 5 minus 8, we actually add the number to 8, equating to minus 13. That's because we're going further into negative territory. However, if it were also negative, as in minus 8 minus minus 5, it would invert the operation, turning into addition, so minus 8 plus 5, resulting in minus 3. We've also got the greatest common divisor and the least common multiple. 
The greatest common divisor is the biggest number that can be divided into a set of smaller numbers, and the least common multiple is the smallest number that those numbers can divide. So for example, Eight. 2 and 12, the greatest common divisor is 4, the least common multiple is 24. This is also important in fractions because 12 over 8 is essentially the same as 3 over 2. After all, you can divide both the top and the bottom by the maximum number of 4. And one more thing to remember is NEVER DIVIDE BY ZERO EPIC! Now that we got that out of the way, math officially stops being fun. Because that's when... He appears. They added letters to math! Why? Why would you do that? Who would do this? Fran... Francosis... Frank... Francis Viana? Fuck this dude! Every high schooler jumping your ass in the afterlife! So letters, which we call variables, example XYZ, are used in mathematics to represent unknown or variable quantities. They are placeholders in equations and formulas ready to take on different values. They allow us to write general mathematical expressions that enable us to solve problems where specific values are not yet known. An example would be x plus 5 equals 10. You can subtract 5 from both sides of the equation to get the answer x equals 5. Hooray! Let's get even more complex! Let's combine what we learned earlier with this current topic! This equation looks complicated, right? Well, the joy of variables is that we can just simplify them to get the answer. First, we need to understand that we treat variables like separate numbers that we don't know. For instance, in 3x minus 4, you cannot subtract the 4 from the 3x directly because 4 is a constant and 3x is a term with a variable. Also, 3x is the same as 3 times x, but we write it as the former for easier reading. Only like terms can be combined. Like terms are terms that have the same variable. For example, 2x and x are like terms, and so are 12 and 3. Therefore, we can combine them and get 2 times the quantity 3x minus 4 plus 5 equals x over 2 plus 9. Then we use the DISTRIBUTIVE PROPERTY! When you have an expression like a the quantity b plus c, it equals to ab plus ac, because the a multiplies with all the like terms in the quantity. In our case, 3x minus 4 is the same as 2 times 3x minus 2 times 4. And yes, as long as the variable is to the same power, we can multiply them with any number. So the solution then becomes this. Now, this fraction bothers me, since because of it, I cannot isolate the x. Therefore, we multiply it by 2, getting the x. But because of the distributive rule and the fact that the equation must be balanced, we need to multiply each segment by 2, giving us 12x minus 6 equals x plus 18. So we inverse the operation by subtracting both sides with x and adding 16 to both sides, giving us 11x equals 34. Now we inverse the equation again by dividing both sides by 11, giving us 34 divided by 11. Which isn't a nice number, however, with this I've explained all the mathematical rules to take into account. Almost! We got some BONUS RULES! How are you a jackpot, baby? Any segment multiplied by 0 turns any number into 0. Multiplying every number by 1 gives itself, and minus 1 gives us its negative counterpart. And same goes to division. Except... NEVER DIVIDE BY ZERO! In math, we don't actually have to use the term equal. We can use something called inequalities instead. There are symbols like greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. For example, solving x is greater than 5 means finding all the values at x that are greater than 5. In 2x plus 3 is less than 7, we find the values of x for 2x plus 3 is less than 7. Let's solve that. 2x plus 3 is less than 7, we subtract 3 from both sides, and then we divide both sides by 2, giving us x is less than 2, which means that x is now the element of everything from minus infinity to 2. Two important things to note is that if the inequality was less than or equal instead of just less than, we would have to exchange a parenthesis of the number 2 for a square bracket. The reason for that is that the closed brackets indicate that an x can be all numbers from infinity to 2, which includes 2, because 2 can be less than 2 or equal to 2. 
The second thing you need to pay attention to, if we multiply a normal equation by minus 1, nothing changes, the equation still stands. However, if we do the same thing in inequality, we have to make the inequality do a 180 degrees, because that's just the way it makes sense. Alright, we can now return to normal equations. Just to explain another autistic concept called... Systems of equations. Yeah. One equation with one variable isn't enough. Let's add multiple! <laughs> For example, y equals 2x plus 3, and 2x equals minus y plus 5. We can't isolate the variables on one side because we still have variables on the other. Therefore, we can't solve the equation. Right? Well, we kind of can. Because this is kind of like anime titties. No, it's not. I just want to know if you're still listening. The way we solve this is by first isolating the y from both equations. y equals 2x plus 3, which is already done. So we can isolate the y on the second one by subtracting 2x from both sides and then adding y. Now both equations are equal to y, so now we can equate the equations to one another, which we call the substitution method, like this. We simplify the equation by adding 2x to both sides and subtracting 3 from both sides, and then x equals 1 over 2. Eureka! Now that we know what the x is, we can throw it back into either of the equations for the y to get that variable as well. So, y equals 5 minus 2x, we interchange the x by 1 over 2, we get 5 minus 1, which means y is 4. And there you go, x is 1 over 2 and y is 4. Systems of equations can have more unknown variables, but we'll cover that on a later date. Now that that's out of the way, we can move on and do something actually pretty interesting and not very acoustic. Remember how I said multiplication and division were like addition and subtraction on steroids? Well, we put those on steroids too and created powers and roots. This little small boy at the top is called the exponent and it decides how many times the base number is gonna multiply itself. So for example, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, which is the same as 3 times 3 times 3 which is the same as 3 plus 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 3. And roots are divisions of steroids working the exact opposite of power. They look a little different. Their index defines how many times the radicant is gonna get divided by a certain same number. So cubic root of 27 is the same as 3, which is the same as 27 divided by 3 divided by 3 equals 3, which is the same as 27 minus 3 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 equals 3. Some important rules for later. Any non-zero number raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Except 0! Do not! RAISED TO THE POWER OF ZERO! A negative exponent indicates that the reciprocal of the base is raised to the absolute value of the exponent, which is 1, unless we're in a fraction. Just imagine you're switching me and Makima from top to bottom. We also have some other general rules, like if a base of the number is the same, we add two exponents onto one another and not multiply them. Division does the exact opposite, except we subtract them. We also got the power of a power and the power of a product, which is pretty self-explanatory. One of the main things we need to remember is that no number under an even root can be a negative. If the root is odd, then it's fine. We also got these two rules, which work the same way as the rule of power. Powers and roots can also be defined in decimals and fractions. For example, 2 to the power of 2 over 3 is the same as cubic root 2 to the power of 2, which is the same as cubic root 4. Alright! 3 times x all to the power of 2. How would we solve that? Well, 3 times x, or 3x, is a like term that, when squared, gives us 3 times 3x, which is 9x to the power of 2. Pretty simple. Then how would we solve 3 plus x all to the power of 2? The same way, right? Wrong! Meanwhile, 3 times x are like terms 3 plus x aren't. Therefore, 3 plus x all to the power of 2 is basically the same as 3 plus x times 3 plus x which equals to 9 plus 6 x plus x to the power of 2, or for a simplified version, x to the power of 2 plus 6 x plus 9. Alright, now let's combine what we just learned with the previous subject, creating quadratic equations. I already simulated a linear equation with my first example, x plus 5 equals 10. But to refresh your memory, this is how they look like, where a and b are constants and x is a variable we want to solve for. Now remember the powers and roots that I just explained? Now we'll be combining those and creating quadratic equations. They're typically written as ax to the power of 2 plus bx plus c equals 0. Now, this is a bit more difficult to solve, you know. We still got one variable, which is x, but they have different powers. Therefore, they cannot be solved by isolating the x on one side. So, what the fuck do we do? 
we factor them. Factoring is a process of breaking down a complex expression into simpler terms that, when multiplied together, give the original expression. Consider x to the power of 2 plus x plus 6 equals 0. We have two ways to solve that. Number one is that we're gonna use the Vieta's rule. MY GOAT! Second only to Toji Fushiguro! This man and his equation has solved me so many hours of studying, it's not even real. Which is kind of ironic since this is the same motherfucker that added letters to math. So fuck this handsome squid we're looking ass, I'm still jumping you in hell! The Vieta's rule states, x1 plus x2 equals minus b over a, and x1 times x2 equals c over a. Now, that makes no sense, but essentially, if you still remember our equation, a is 1, because 1 times a variable equals the same variable, b is 5, and c is 6. So, x1 plus x2 equals minus 5, and x1 times x2 equals 6. Now, this part relies on our intuition. We have to guess what x1 and x2 could be, looking at our equation. And that's pretty simple. There are minus 2 and minus 3, which splits our equation from this into this. But this equation isn't solved! Not until we use the zero product property! Anything multiplied by zero makes zero. If we're trying to equate our equation to zero, then we can do that by making one of the terms zero, either x plus three or x plus two. So the way I like to visualize that is by making this very mathematically incorrect equation. Let's think what the x would need to be for the equation to equal to zero. For the first one, it would have to be minus three, and the other, it'd have to be minus two. Therefore, the solution is x1 equals minus 3 and x2 equals minus 2. Since variables are ever changing, they can also have multiple solutions. To check if we made a mistake, we can insert our numbers into the original equation. So x to the power of 2 plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, minus 3 to the power of 2 plus 5 times minus 3 plus 6 equals 0, 9 minus 15 plus 6 equals 0, so 0 equals 0, which means that x minus 3 is correct. Now we do the same for minus 2 x to the power of 2 plus 5x plus 6 equals 0, minus 2 to the power of 2 plus 5 times minus 2 plus 6 equals 0, 4 minus 10 plus 6 equals 0, 0 equals 0, so both of the solutions are in fact correct. Let's take another more difficult example. 3x to the power of 2 minus 7x minus 6 equals 0. If we try to solve this the same way we did before, so by the Vieta's rule, we get x1 plus x2 equals 7 over 3, and x1 times x2 equals minus 2. You may still be able to guess this solution by blindly guessing, but it might not be as easy as it were before. In this case, we're using the AUTISM EQUATION! It might look like a lot, but it works on the same fundamental concept as the previous equation. If we insert the numbers we have instead of the variables, we can simplify to the equation where we get this, and then we simplify it to get this, and then we simplify the square root, and then this is what's left. So this is where the plus and minus comes in. Since we have two x variables that we need to solve for, we're gonna give one arithmetic equation to each of them. So x1 equals 7 plus 11 divided by 6, which is 3. And x2, which is 7 minus 11, divided by 6, which is minus 2 over 3. Okay, with that out of the way, I'd say we covered about 30% of mathematics. And I would love to cover the rest, since I had the entire segment of functions already scripted out, but this video is taking way too long, and I'm trying to upload weekly now, so I can't cover all of mathematics in one video, I would kill myself! So if this video gets 7613,000 likes, I will make a part 2 and cover more concepts, like all types of functions, geometry, trigonometry, and then calculus. And before anybody says that I don't keep my promises, Ham Cheese and Boobies full song is in fact coming out. I've also made a $100 challenge with my friend that I would not be able to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of February. So please help a brother out, man! Please stop edging and gooning to my videos. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. Shake that gas